<laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. You got to use your imagination. This weekend I've been doing shooting a few videos because it's raining. It's going to rain all weekend. It's Saturday. So I've always wanted to do a video of me cooking on a camp stove, you know, on a backpacking stove. Um, so I figured this would be a good time to do it. Um, and this is going to be one of my favorite trail meals. Like, I eat this all the time, okay? And there's different ways of preparing it, but I am a couscous fanatic, right? And the small grain couscous, not the big stuff, right? So if you guys stay tuned... I'll teach you how to, you know, basically boil water <laughs> for uh, a backpacking meal that I absolutely love. So, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so, <laughs> this meal is really easy to cook, okay? Um, and basically it's just boiling water on your backpacking stove or on the fire or wherever you want to boil your water. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to be using is, I'll show it to you. I should have had this ready to go, right? <laughs> you know me, man. By the seat of my pants. Near East couscous, right? And I like the herb chicken. It just seems to taste the best to me. They got toasted pine nut, Parmesan, Southwest Jubilee. Um, they got other flavors, but this, this one's my favorite, right? Herb chicken, real simple. Uh, like I said, this is the smaller grain couscous. So we got a box of this, right? And I can eat the whole box, right? There's, uh, I don't know, probably three or four servings in here. I can eat the whole box. I love this stuff, okay? Um, now, on the trail, I keep it fairly simple, and I just add spices to it. Um, I also add a half of one of these Thai kitchen garlic and vegetable rice noodles. It's a rice noodle soup. Um, rice noodles are generally more healthy than... Uh, pasta noodles, okay? Uh, less calories, uh, less less wear and tear on your gut, that kind of thing, okay? Um, this isn't a nutrition channel. I try to eat fairly healthy. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I take vitamins, take supplements. You know, I try to take care of myself. Um, I work out. But uh, these, are, these are delicious. Rice noodles, right? They also sell rice noodles by themselves in the grocery store. Just check them out. If your store does not um, uh, stock these Thai kitchen, you can see it, Thai kitchen, garlic and vegetable, instant rice noodle soup, right? Delicious. If they don't stock them, you can always go to the manager and say, hey, I'd like you to get a box of these for me. I'll buy them, right? These are like, I don't know, $1.29 a piece. And it, it makes a pretty good bowl of soup for a man, right? A man, manly man. So, anyway. Um, so, it, here's what I do, okay? I got some spices here. Um, and I like to put sugar in it also. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, so, basically here we got... Um, tastefully simple bacon bacon, right? This is a trail wonder makes everything taste great <laughs> you know you could put this on dog crap and you'd probably be able to eat it and stomach it right um you got to order these though um, i get them off of ebay tastefully simple bacon bacon and it's basically a um imitation bacon bits with, with some herbs and spices garlic and stuff like that right it's great i add it to the couscous on the trail at home, I'll put onions and all kinds of stuff in this preparation. But on the trail, I keep it pretty simple, okay? Um, 
I also put in a lot of garlic. I love garlic. And I also put in hot pepper. Hot red pepper flakes. Okay. Um, this particular dish we're going to be using a Pennsylvania favorite. It's called sweet bologna. Right. It's got a sweet taste to it. And this is like bologna with cheddar cheese like mixed through it. Okay. So I'm going to add this to it as well. Um, so basically I take my Tervis cup. And this is one of those meals that. I have a great affinity for on the trail um, because there's no dishes to wash when you're finished. Okay, get yourself one of these Tervis cups called the Tervis Tumbler. This is 16 ounce. You can also get them in 24 ounce, but I find that the 24 ounce is just too big. <coughs> but you may not find it too big. I like the 16 ounce ones. Okay, um, they're a little expensive. They're like 15, 16 bucks, sometimes 20, 25 bucks. But, I do a lot of winter camping in frigid temperatures, and this is the only cup I've found yet that I haven't cracked when boiling water, boiling water into a cup that's, you know, minus 5 degrees or whatever. You know what I mean? So, very durable. I haven't cracked one yet. This one here, this particular Coca Pelli uh, Tervis Tumbler is 4 years old, maybe 5 right my sister got it for me a long time ago and i'm like man trey you did great because this thing's all wonder okay so this is what i use to eat out of if i you know for a main meal if i can't boil water and add it to this cup with whatever's in the cup whatever i choose to put in the cup um i don't bring it you know what i mean um sometimes i like those mountain house meals i like stuff that's real simple out there right um but, you know, you, you trail chefs, you can get as complex as you want. Uh, I find that simple meals are just best for me, okay? Um, so, here's, I'm going to set up the stove. I'm choosing right now to use, okay? This is an older stove that I have. This is called a Brunton Crux, okay? This stove, they also have a titanium version, um... Uh, Brunton was bought by Optimus. It's now the Optimus Crux. They still sell it. It's an extremely uh, popular stove among uh, long-distance backpackers. It's light. I mean, the thing only weighs like two ounces, okay? Um, it's got a bail handle for the regulation. This stove here is about 10 years old. Uh, let me think. What, what is it? 2017? I, I probably got this probably older than 10 years. I probably got this in 2004, 2003 maybe. So it's old and this thing still works great, okay? It's just a, a real simple, no muss, no fuss, ultra light stove, okay? So we're gonna get ourselves a fuel bottle here, okay? Here's my, uh, this is my alcohol, my DEET or heat, my heat for my alcohol stove. That's what I keep it in, uh, a liquor flask. <laughs> okay. So we're going to screw this puppy on here, right? And this this uh, fuel bottle is almost empty, right? But at room temperature, it, it it's going to work good for us in here, okay? Now, yeah, I'm in my room, and I'm cooking on a dresser, right? I'm cooking in my area where I keep a lot of my gear, my, my uh, field gear, you know, for backpacking, bushcraft, all that stuff, okay? Um... So we got the stove going right now. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to start the water boiling or, you know, start the water heating right now. Now, honestly, I wouldn't advocate doing this, not in these conditions. Uh, <laughs> so I'm looking for my lighter. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. You know, I always have lighters laying around, but I don't know what the hell I did with them all. <laughs> That's just weird, because I just had one. In, oh, here it is. <laughs> all right, so I got the lighter, right? So I'm just going to light it. I wouldn't advocate doing this in a confined space. Um, honestly, frankly, I'm comfortable with it, you know. But if you're not comfortable with it, don't just don't do it, right? Do it outside. Okay, so, 
there's that. I'm gonna put the water on. Hopefully I won't spill it. Now this is a canteen cup I've had for a long time. Uh, Bob and I are big canteen cup freaks, right? They're lightweight. They're great for small stoves. Now when I put this thing or any pot on a stove, I'll do this to see how stable it is. And if it's pretty stable, then you can let it go, okay? That's how I test it. Because sometimes you'll put it on top of a stove and the base is too small and that thing topples right over because it's not on there correctly. Okay? Um, so here's what we do. Uh, okay. First thing I do is I open one of these things up. Okay? Um, I pull out the rice noodles. It comes in a packet like this. Okay? And I'm just going to, over this bag right here, chop these things in half. All I do is grab it and twist it. Okay? I grab it and I twist it. Right? And I put that half of it in the cup. Okay? Um, uh, the reason I use only half is because I prefer half. You might want the whole thing. Okay? But I'm going to use the whole packet. So sometimes I end up throwing the other half away. Okay, it just depends on what kind of spices I take with me. Um, a lot of times I will use the other half. All right, now I got everything going all over my clean floor. I'm gonna have to vacuum when I'm done. All right, oh dear, right? <laughs> so at this point, check the flame there, flame looks good. At this point, I'll open up the accessory packet, the, uh, the spice packet for the soup, right? And gotta watch my sodium. So I'm only gonna put half of it in there, okay? Just half. I mean, yeah, it, there's a tendency to overdo it with these things, with the salt and the sugar and whatnot. And that's okay, but if you're watching your blood pressure and and by the way, eating too much salt does not cause high blood pressure. It merely makes it worse if you're, you know, have a predisposition for high blood pressure. But uh, increased salt intake does not cause high blood pressure. Just like eating a lot of sugar does not cause diabetes. It just makes it worse if you're predisposed to it. Okay? Just a little medical tip for you. Okay? Um, now, I'm sure I'll get in the comments that I'm wrong and whatnot. But, uh, okay, that's your opinion. <laughs> uh, and then I, they've got sesame oil in there. I always put that in there because it helps keep the, the uh, helps keep the noodles and the couscous and all from sticking together. Okay, so what I mucked that up. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Well, I tell you, the top of the dresser needed a good oiling. That's for sure. Right. So if I do this a couple hundred more times. The whole top of this dress will get oiled. I like natural furniture. You know, natural finishes and whatnot. Okay, so I got that in there in the cup, right? Um, now, I can't fit this whole box in here. I just kind of judge it, right? Because I've done it a thousand times. I'm just going to judge how much I'm putting in here. And that's about right, right there. Okay, actually it might be a little too much. But... We'll see. Now I have a packet, a spice packet from the couscous that's already open from a different uh, box of couscous that I was eating a few nights ago. Um, so I'm just going to use the rest of this packet and maybe a little bit of the other one. So I we'll have to see. I got to see what it looks like when it comes out of here. Yeah, I think that's enough. Okay, this is just a bunch of, you know, herbs and spices and, you know. And then, I put in a bunch of garlic and bacon bacon. It's in, it's in here, okay. Let's see what we got here. Make sure this is, just want to turn it up a little bit. See, it boils. All right, and I tell you, I like a lot of garlic. All right, I'm a garlic-aholic. Um... And then I put some sugar in, okay, just to give it a little bit of sweetness. And that's about it, okay. 
Uh, sometimes I'll add other spices. I couldn't tell you what this is. I just like it. Okay, it's pretty good stuff. Um, it's some kind of Szechuan base for stir fry. Um, and, you know, as far as spices are concerned, you can spice anything you want, right? Let me see what we got here. Uh, got my uh, Phoenix E12 here. I want to see what the light looks like. 14 minutes, okay. Okay, so we're just waiting for the water to boil now. This is ready, okay? I think I have a little bit too much couscous in there, but it's okay. You'll see what happens. I fill the water almost all the way to the top. I mix it up real good. Get everything, you know, thoroughly uh, uh, incorporated in there. And then I put the lid on it and let it hydrate, okay? Because couscous sucks up water like a sponge. Uh... So I'm going to put these back in here. Uh, I usually keep all my food, right? I take it out of the original packages uh, for backpacking, even bushcraft. Uh, if I take food with me, I'll take it in Ziploc bags, freezer bags, the tough ones, okay? There's nothing like, you know, having some perishable liquid or pasta or something bust all over the inside of your your rucksack or pack right now i got this on low a low flame setting if it was higher the a higher flame setting this it would be boiling already okay but it's almost ready i can see it's kind of you know got them little bubbles forming um now i got my my sweet bologna here it's all ready for when I put this stuff in the cup. Got my long uh, titanium spoon, right? Real long. That's key. It's got to be a long spoon. Trust me. <laughs> Where's my knife at? A neck knife. Oh, I wanted to show you guys another thing. Uh, you can probably see it here. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit this way. All right. And then I'm going to tilt it down a little. And I want to show you this. Okay. This is another favorite way I like to wear an EDC knife. Okay. This is my LMF design. Uh, you know, mine and Mike Wallace, right? Uh, CPM 3V steel LMF and I'll carry it right in the front I'll put it on my belt and I will slide the whole belt this way so that that knife sits right in the front and I'll walk around camp just like this right and you can see it's canted up the handles up in the air a little bit instead of being down here and that's because I can't that that belt clip at a certain angle to get that handle up in the air because it's it's just easier to draw that way instead of reaching down because most knives are handle heavy right all right so i wear it in the front and you know your, your shirt will cover it um i don't take the tabby dangler off right i just fold it to the side see it or you can take it off it'll sit a little flatter if you take it off either way is fine I don't take it off. I just leave it on. It's easy to fold back. I make them that way for that very reason. <clears throat> okay. So I just wanted to show you that different way. The other way I like to carry it is on the side. Okay. At, you know, a 35 or whatever. All right. So let's get back to... Couscous. <laughs> okay. Couscous. Couscouses. Uh, the water was boiling. Now watch, if you're using a canteen cup, be careful. Because those, those uh, the flame likes to lick up onto the bail handle and make it real heavy, uh, hot sometimes. So be careful grabbing it. All right, now I'm adding the water. Right, right, right. All the way up to about there. Okay. Put that back on there. Give it a decent stir. I don't think I forgot anything, okay? Give it a decent stir. Now, 
You can put the meat in now, or I'll show you what I do before I add the meat, right? Uh, sometimes I'll even put salmon in this. I love salmon, you know, pink, uh, wild-caught salmon in uh, those packages, foil packages, right? And here's what I'll do before I put the meat in. Make sure it's mixed up real good. Get to the bottom of the cup, all right? That's important. Or what's going to happen is you're going to run into a part of the mixture that's like all salt and sugar, okay? You don't want that. Okay. <clears throat> now, however it turns out is how it turns out, and I always eat it. I never throw it away. Sometimes it turns out a little watery. Sometimes it's perfect, like it, it absorbed all the water, and that's all it could absorb. Um, but this stuff is good no matter how you eat it. You, you could eat it right now, and it would be delicious, okay? This is a very simple meal that I like to fix on the in the field, okay, on a stove. You can even cook uh, this on a fire. You can boil your, your water on, on a fire. I've done that too. Um, uh, it's just that, you know, when I'm backpacking and I'm not in full bushcrafty mode, you know, a bit of bushcrafting, right? Um, I like to use a stove. It's cleaner, more efficient, you know, just depends on what I'm doing. It's everything situational with me. All right. So anyway, I'm going to add the, uh, the sweet bologna to this in a, I don't know, about a minute or two. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's all there is to it. This is my couscous rice noodle main meal for backpacking. Okay. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's something different. Um, but that's pretty cool. Cooking on the trail is fun. I love it. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.